Hey everyone, it's me, Arthur Cade, welcoming former Bachelorette Andy Dorfman to Behind the Velvet Rope. Make sure to check out her terrific new book, It's Not Okay, detailing her experience on the show and life after. Check it out. Hey everyone, it's me, Arthur Cade, and yes, Andy Dorfman, it is okay <laughs> that you're here with me. Yay. Congratulations. It's not Thank okay. You. you have a book out. I was telling you I Thank read you. it. This was some fascinating stuff, yeah. man. Yeah, good. I good would, to hear. I can't, if I was a single woman, <laughs> I would be the worst. Like, you handled some of this stuff with just pretty cool bravado. I got to give you some props. appreciate that. So... Tell me about putting all these stories in here. It must have been pretty uh, therapeutic. Yeah, I mean, obviously writing the book was very therapeutic. What people that haven't read it probably don't know is it all stems from these journal entries. So when I was going through the breakup, I literally took a piece of paper and a pen and started writing down every single thing that I did that day, every feeling I felt that day, and went back and looked at them all and saw how crazy and pathetic and also hilarious a lot of these <laughs> moments and irrational thoughts were and decided you know what I'm just gonna kind of like bear it all for everyone I love how you use numbers for all the men yeah. that was the best part because yep. I, I'm like that is the most gangster thing you can do because <laughs> you know there are dudes reading this yeah. who are like trying to figure out who they are oh yeah it was like my version of like not getting your lover's tattooed name on your arm <laughs> you know and then you got to go erase it I was like yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna not do the tattoo I'm just not going to tattoo my ex-lover's names in my book. So what is it like? I've I've always been so skeptical of the whole bachelor bachelorette you process. And everyone else. Like it's impossible. Yeah, Listen, sure. we've all dated a million sure. people, some more than others, and it's like it is hard enough to date, let alone go through this whole process and actually yeah. be engaged yeah. and like doing it with the book. Let me <laughs> put the book down. Um don't put it down though. Go read it. <laughs> but it's hard enough to date, let alone get engaged. So you're yeah. going through that process. You sure. end up with Josh. Sure. Did you really at that moment believe, hey, this is the person I'm going to spend the rest of my life with? 100%. Get out and of here. And even to this day, you know that's true if I'm saying it. Having read the story and the aftermath of it all, 100%. Why? Is it like... Because I wouldn't have done it if I wasn't... I would have never said yes. I would have never let it get to that point if I wasn't 100%. I mean, 100% certain that was going to be my husband. It's amazing because... You're not a fame-hungry person. You were successful yeah. professionally. You're educated. Obviously, you're beautiful. And you're like, this wasn't something you needed. You got convinced to do it. And then you get on it. Does it? Does the whole process, like I've, I've told you, friends of mine have been mm -hmm. on the various franchises. Yeah. And I hear that it's like this nonstop vacation. And you do get mesmerized. Did you get like caught up in the whole thing happening? Yeah, I mean, for sure. I think for me, because I had come from such a different background, it was so wild that I was doing all of this, and I was a little bit of a cynic going into it, not going to lie. I think I was kind of like, all right, of all the ways, I just have a feeling I'm going to find my husband on a reality TV show. I was like, this is karma. Like, I knew it. And so I think having that feeling going into it, and then, of course, you know, you're surrounded by helicopters and hot guys and <laughs> everyone wants love, love, love. There is a pressure, I think, that you internally, or at least I did, put on myself. Um, but that's like any relationship, like the puppy love. It is. You know, you meet a girl and you're super into her and then you're like, I don't care about this you flaw. You start finding care about every yeah. flaw. After like the two month period, yep. you're like, dude, she talks yeah. too much. You're like, oh. The grace I... period is over. <laughs> and you had that because once the thing was over, you started seeing kind of, and you write about it, which mm -hmm. I thought was awesome. He had some pretty ugly sides to him. So were you like concerned when you're putting it out there? Obviously, he's going to read it. Or you're yeah. just like at that point, you're like, I don't care. I'm just going to bare my heart and do whatever I want. You know what? Of course, there's like some reluctancy. I mean, I don't want to be the person that like breaks anyone under the coals. But at the end of the day, we all signed up for this show. And every single one of my exes has since done something else to continue the show in some way, whether it's like The Bachelorette or like a new season of something else. Like We all decided to make our private lives public. We kind of every single person, in my opinion, has opened that door. And you know what? So what if I'm going to walk? through it like I feel like nobody needs to ask for permission and if they read it great if they don't I'm fine with that too like, it got tough at the end do you feel pressure at that point because at that point everybody is kind of cheering like there's a fan yeah. base yeah. and you're like all right we went through this whole process in the public eye we need to make this work was there internal pressure I've got to figure out how to make this work more than if you were in a normal relationship 
Um, yeah, I think there definitely was this added layer of pressure as far as everyone's rooting for us and you don't want to let people down. But again, it does relate to the normal relationship, like your family. Okay, let's say you're, you've dated someone for 10 years and your family spend 10 holiday seasons with that person. Like it's you feel worst. like that's such a letdown. It's the right? worst. It's so like it's watching all, a dog die. It's I know, worst. it's all relatable. So it's like the more, the deeper you get into it or the more public it is, like the harder it is to put down and the more pressure I think everyone feels. I love how you talk about what you went through after a breakup because it's always fascinating the the binge eating the burning of clothes it's pretty awesome I'm like no guy is ever gonna date me if they read this book because i'm like we all eating sesame chicken thing. and like popping popcorn at the same time but it's... girls get over breakups faster than guys like guys we actually have these things that we grieve called emotions no it's because there's yeah. a million if you're if you look like you there's a million other guys already in the wings waiting if you're a guy you're like i'll never find anyone like her and you literally go through a six-month grieving process my friends and i've had you're in the minority in that oh then... i feel like We've I feel like so a lot of guys just like go out to the bar and go on like a two week binge. And but then you feel like crap afterwards. Sooner or later, I feel like every guy has that moment. At least I kind of hope every guy has that moment where they're like sitting in their apartment by themselves and they it hits them. Like whether it's three months down the road, six months down the road, I don't know. Girls, I feel like as women, we just feel it initially and and like allow ourselves to feel it. You're in the minority. I know, me and my friends are so sappy and awful <laughs> that way. We, like, grieve. We're like, <laughs> like, like it's awful. You made me feel bad for you now. Yeah, I know. Aww. So you decided not to return back to your normal profession after yeah. this. Why? Um, you know, a lot of people ask me that, and I always say, look, I got a law degree. I worked really hard for it. I earned it. It's mine for life. It's not, doesn't expire. Like, I get to go back to it. But, you know, I got a chance to do something incredible. I got a chance to go on two seasons of a show and travel the world and now live in New York City and kind of just, like, take a little detour off the path that I had always kept myself on. So I'm just embracing it. Like, you know, who's it hurting? And I feel kind of empowered by the fact that I got this opportunity and I actually took advantage of it and yeah. You told me dating in New York is awesome. Walk me through I what it is it. like <laughs> being a beautiful, smart woman in New York dating. I wouldn't know, but I mean. You, you would know, <laughs> tell me, what is the experience like? I just think dating in New York is fun. There is like a vibe to the city. First of all, there's so much energy, but like, I don't know, there's, there's just like a sophistication to it and you meet a guy for drinks and you can stay out till like six in the morning and just talking and I, I don't know, there's a there's a level of sophistication of dating here that so I love. So much better in Atlanta. And I'm from Philly, which is like yeah. similar to Atlanta, which it's like, they're small cities. It's the worst. Yeah. You never have to worry about running into an ex either. It's the best. There's so yeah, many there's different so circles. There's like, like 18 like... different circles of different crowds. Yeah. You're like, I'm done. See ya. Yeah, bye. New they're, on the, they're on the Upper East Side. I'm on like yeah. in Soho. Pe peace out. I'm downtown. It's great. I do think there's just like this maturity and sophistication to it. Maybe it's because people here, I feel like, date a lot older. They do. In no, the South, there's no everyone's pressure already to get married. married. Oh, I always joke. I'm like, you're not even ripe till you're 30. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so good. Don't worry. Philly's you know? the same way as the South. If you were 30 years old and not married, yeah. it's like you're a leper. Yeah, that's what I said in the book. People start to whisper, like, are you a lesbian or are you psychotic? <laughs> you know, if you're not married by 25 in the South. Once you walked away and you decided you weren't returning to your profession, what was your mindset about moving forward? Where did you see your life going three, five, 10, 15 years down the line? Um, you know what? I stopped seeing my life three, five, and 10 years down the line because I always had done that. I mean, I was the type of girl that like graduated high school and then I went to college and then law school and then straight into a job. And I just felt like exhilarated going on the show and just saying, okay, this is not where I thought I'd be, but here I am. And I, so I, I stopped. I stopped looking at three, five, and 10. Speaking of the show, they're coming back again and we've got Jojo yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. What's it like? What If she was sitting right here, what would be the advice that you would give her about what the experience will be like? Um, the experience will be exhausting. It will be emotional and trying, but it'll be the most unbelievable experience you'll ever have. Like, none of us have any business traveling the way we do and visiting these places and going in helicopters and palaces. And I would say remember that and also take a moment to enjoy it all like we, we have no business doing what we get to do let's be honest did you watch the first episode i did the best part was the professions of some of oh, these I dudes oh they're getting more and more creative i'm like wait how bachelor su bachelor at super, super fan dude that's the creepiest thing ever. like what would you do if you're in that position and you're sitting and you realize that this dude's like creep 
like bachelorette super fan. Like, how do you even have that conversation? Go to the courthouse so, and get a restraining order. I'd be ASAP. freaked out. And then yeah. there was hipster. Yes, it's like. Wouldn't that have bugged you out? Like, do you did you walk in and there were already certain guys that were eliminated in your head right off the bat? Like, you're like, there's zero chance for this person. Yeah, I mean, if you walk into a bar and you see 25 women, you're gonna knock out what 10 of them initially, right? Did you know that certain guys would end up going as far as they did? Like, um, I had inklings. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing: there are a bunch of different little hurdles. So you've got like hometowns, and you want to know how that first kiss is, and like the solo date. So there are different hurdles that you've got to get through that keep you from being like, "That's the one. That's number two. That's number three. No doubt about it." But I mean, anybody that walks into a bar or a room full of people can be like, "All right, those fifteen are really hot." <laughs> I need to go on this show. <laughs> you know what I also love? It's something that bothers me about what happens with the Bachelor is when slut shaming occurs and yeah. other bad stuff. And you yeah. actually were openly writing about because I, mm -hmm. I don't watch the show. I'm mm -hmm. just, I don't have time. Although I think I would be totally like eating my Doritos yeah. and killing it Eat. and like commentating. If you're sappy, you would love it. I would love it. But yeah. you wrote, I remember when you you had that national story happen when the mm -hmm. guy called you out in the reunion. Yeah. And I'm like, what is the big deal? And you write about it here. You guys dated for two months. Yeah, Who I met his family. Like he told me he loved me. I, I made it a lot further than a lot of other people do. I mean, it's New and York. That, it's I'm one night. Of the show. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, in real life. Like, you think about it. Two months. Meet somebody's family. They say they love you. Like, you really like them. You're trying to see the potential. Yeah. It, I, I think I read about that book. I'm like, what, do you, what else do you think you're doing? But America was, it's like. I know. That's, I would have bothered the hell out. I would have gone on Twitter and just ripped everybody. How, how difficult was yeah, it Yeah, I mean, it is very difficult to hold myself back on a lot of stuff and bite my tongue. But I will say. For me, at least it got people talking about an issue that clearly is there. Like, there's there's not a ton of opportunity to bring, like, actual social issues like sexism and yep. slut-shaming into reality TV, and that was a point to be able to do it. And so for me, I, Caitlin and I have talked about this too. We're like, if we have to be the punching bag for it to be brought up and for people to actually discuss it and talk about it, then fine. Like, so be it. I'm happy that it's a conversation. When you Five years ago, like well, you would have never no, asked you me that, have. that question. Well, because yeah. so, and you write about this as well. Social media has changed everything, yeah. and we were actually right before you came in here. We had a little break, and we were talking about how the first bachelorette would have mm -hmm. never had to deal with the stuff that you and future bachelorettes have to yeah. deal with. Like there was no Instagram, there was no yep. Snapchat, there was no Twitter. Like there's instantaneous comments now. Like I don't know how you guys do it. Like I. Yeah. How can you not be sensitive about it? You are. It's funny that you say that too, because I'm super close with Trista, the first bachelorette, and we had this I've conversation. Interviewed her multi she's the nicest woman. Oh my god, I love her. her, I call her my OG. Yeah, great. they're great people. So I've talked to her about that with the social media. I think you get to a point where I always have to remind myself that like 90% of it is positive, and to not be that person that only looks at the 10% that's negative. For some reason, we allow, and it's our fault because we allow people that have the negative voice to speak the loudest. And so it's like, when you go on someone's social media, usually 90% of it's really nice. How you just look at the negatives. We all do. We're all guilty of that. What happens when you have feelings for multiple people at the same time? Um, I mean, I liked multiple people at the same time. I think I was fortunate in the fact that I didn't fall in love with them. I mean, you saw like last season with Ben. He told two girls he loved them. And I mean, I'm glad I wasn't in that position, but... I don't know. You're kind of like it's an embarrassment of riches in a sense. Like <laughs> I love your attitude, man. Like, let's be honest. I mean, darn, I really, really like two guys, and they're hot, and they really like me, and they're great. Like, it's an embarrassment of riches. I'm gonna pick up your book again because if this doesn't make people want to read this thing, <laughs> it is okay. Even though it's not okay, it is okay to read this book. Congratulations, yes, Andy. Thank you. This was fascinating Thanks. stuff because it's really a look into the mind of our generation because we're similar age yeah. our generation what dating is like what mm -hmm. courting process is like and it's really cool and, and what the breakup process is like and moving on so yeah. congrats really cool stuff thank you appreciate can't wait it. for the sequel <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun. everybody check out our new book it's not okay